endorphins. This video is about flooding your body with happy chemicals so you can feel like an actual person who's capable of being alive during the winter months. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. It's me, Athena, your local anti-winter enthusiast. Winter is notoriously the time of year where my depression cranks itself up from a low enduring simmer to a hot flambe grease fire. But this year, I'm not taking it sitting down. Mm -mm. Today, I'm going to share three behavioral shifts I'm making so I can survive this awful, terrible season and how you can create your own survival kit that's unique to your needs. Let's get into the video. There are four hormone bundles slash neurotransmitters that contribute to what we consider happiness, the feeling of happiness. Those four are the dose chemicals or dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. I wrote an article outlining easy, no effort ways that you can increase the flow of these in your body. Uh, I'll leave that in the description below, but here's a quick overview. Dopamine regulates anticipation and reward. Think of how opening a present can sometimes be more exciting than whatever the actual present is. Oxytocin is known as the connection hormone. Think cuddles and hugs and eye contact. Serotonin is the mood regulator and 80% of it is produced in your gut. More on that later. And then endorphins mask pain and discomfort. So, endorphins. It's funny how all of these are, this is four different fonts. So here's how you can create your own major shifts to survive the winter. First off, check out the article in the description slash look into the dose chemicals on your own time. Actually, if you want me to do a more in-depth description and explanation of the dose chemicals, let me know below. Look into the dose chemicals and pick two or three of them that you feel like you have the most access to. We all obviously have access to these, but for instance, I didn't make any of my major shifts around oxytocin because I don't always have access to someone else um, in order to look deeply into their eyes or to cuddle. So pick some activities that you can double down on and access so that you can more consistently and more purposefully flood yourself with these happiness chemicals. Here are the three changes I'm making to survive this winter. I'm exercising at least every other day. Oh, hold on, listen, listen. Wait a second. I never wanted to be that guy who came in here on these internet streets and said, the best way to solve depression is to exercise more. That's not what I'm saying. Exercise floods your body with endorphins. And as we know, <laughs> endorphins mask pain and discomfort. What is existence if not pain and discomfort? Thus, exercising actually makes it easier. It gives me the energy to go about the rest of my day. Now, I personally love burpees. I think they're hilarious. They suck and it's weird. And when you start your day with burpees, you just have to think, uh, life is funny. And that is another thing that kind of boosts my mood. But understand, you don't need resistance bands. You don't need dumbbells. You don't need to even run, honestly. Exercise comes in many forms. That includes dancing. You can just walk outside. You can just walk around your apartment, do a couple laps from the kitchen to the bedroom. You could even add in some high knees if you're, if you're feeling crazy. I also think singing really loud in the shower is exercise. I don't have evidence. I just know that it's true. So one of the major shifts for me is exercising at least every other day because of those sweet endorphins. Number two, and this is where it gets weird, learn something new every week. I know this one sounds like it's coming out of nowhere, but it's actually tied to dopamine. Again, because it's about anticipation and reward, there is something so exciting about the understanding that you're going to experience something new. That's why consistency is so hard because it becomes so boring when we know exactly what's coming. But when you learn something new, you're hitting those receptors and you're building anticipation uh, for this new experience. 
How will I go about learning something new every week? Well, I've scoped out books, movies, podcasts, like all the media around various topics that interest me. And I also have a little section in my agenda where I note down like, oh, something I'm interested in looking up. And this can be very simple. The other day, I was trying to understand why Star Wars was called a space opera. So then I did a deep dive into where that genre of space opera came from. And I actually spent like 45 minutes learning about these different conventions between opera, soap opera, space opera, and whether or not you can just add opera to something to mean melodrama. The answer seems to be yes. So learning something new ups that dopamine and it gives you a consistent thing to anticipate and then a reward for your anticipation and a reward for your hard work of, you know, Googling, what does space opera mean? The third change that I'm making to survive this winter, I'm going to savor my food. (laughs) Listen to me. I know that these seem either too simple to change or like, how is this random thing connected to this other thing? It's all connected. You know what, you know what, let me speak for myself and all other earth signs. Everything is connected to my body, right? Every mood, every experience, every whatever is deeply impacted by my actual physical body. And so that's why I know that these things, even as they look weird or they sound unrelated or not actually helpful, these tiny things that I have access to every single day are actually going to make this winter survivable, are actually going to do what therapy couldn't, honestly. So earlier I mentioned that 80% of serotonin in the body is produced and housed in the digestive tract. So guess what? Hangry people, look at you. You're not actually an It's just chemistry. Run, tell the world. Being hangry is actually scientifically proven. So serotonin, again, regulates your emotion. Full stop. It regulates your emotion. If 80% of it is in your digestive tract, then the food that you're eating is directly impacting your mood. This winter, I'm fighting. Fists out, fighting my depression by eating well. (laughs) I'm gonna keep myself full all winter long. Am I gonna make banana breads that will destroy all the hard work I did for the exercise? Hell yeah. Mmm, it's gonna be so good. I'm gonna pretend like I am at a perpetual wine tasting. I'm gonna pretend like I'm Keanu Reeves in that movie where he's eating a goat as he listens to its life story. So I'm doubling down on my love to eat. I'm going to stop multitasking while I eat. So no more uh, watching TV or being on my phone while I'm eating. I'm gonna like sit there and really savor every morsel of food of course that helps with the serotonin what you're eating impacts the serotonin but that also uh ups your dopamine as well because of the anticipation and reward aspect of things because when i'm looking at this fresh baked bread mm, did i put rosemary on the loaf of course i did and then finally taking that bite so i'm about to have an excellent time and I'm going to keep myself full and that's going to help my serotonin as well as my dopamine. There are a lot of great resources out there that tell you uh, what activities increase dopamine and oxytocin. There are plenty of resources on the internet talking about which foods specifically feed your serotonin the best or you know learning just in your own body what foods make you feel the most comfort. But yeah, pick really low effort activities for each chemical and just commit to doing them every day or every other day. That's it. Thank you for watching. You look hot. Subscribe to my channel. Goodbye. You can remember the four dose chemicals with this fun song. Dopamine. Serotonin. 
oxytocin, endorphins.